Hi, and welcome to the Turbulent World with me, James M. Dorsey, as your host. Three months ago, Wayang Koster, the governor of Hindu-majority Bali, made his mark on the international stage by banning an Israeli squad from participating in this year's FIFA Under-20 World Cup. Operating at the intersection of domestic Indonesian politics, his country's foreign relations, and the fuzzy lines allegedly separating sports and politics, Mr. Costa is weighing a repeat performance with a double whammy. However, this time around, the stakes for Indonesia and Mr. Costa may be higher. If Mr. Costa opposes Israeli participation again, Indonesia could be deprived not only of the hosting of the Association of National Olympic Committees, or ANOC, World Beach Games, the world's most significant water and beach sports event, but also of its General Assembly scheduled to open on August 13, a day after the tournament. Worse, the International Olympic Committee, or IOC, could sanction Indonesia by banning it from the 2028 Los Angeles Summer Olympic Games. In 1964, the IOC barred Indonesia from participating in the Tokyo Summer Olympics after the Southeast Asian refused to let Israel and Taiwan compete in the 1962 Asian Games. Under international sporting rules, hosts must guarantee access to qualifying athletes and teams, irrespective of whether countries have diplomatic relations. Indonesia refuses to recognize Israel as long as the Jewish state fails to solve its long-standing dispute with the Palestinians. So far, Mr. Costa and the Indonesian government, eager to avoid suffering additional reputational damage after FIFA stripped Indonesia of its under-20 World Cup hosting rights earlier this year and moved the tournament to Argentina, appear to be hedging their bets. As governor of a tourism-dependent island, famed for its tolerance and hospitality that was hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic, putting Bali at the center of international controversy would seem not to be in Mr. Costa's interest. In addition, the refusal, backed by Java Governor Gunja Pranowo, to host an Israeli World Cup team, produced mixed results. Mr. Costa reportedly banned the Israeli soccer team at the behest of Megawati Sukarno Putri, a former president and head of President Joko Widodo's ruling Indonesian Democratic Party of Struggle, or PDP-P. The ban was intended to bolster support for Mr. Pronoru, the PDPI's candidate in next year's presidential election. Mr. Widodo is constitutionally barred from running for a third term. The move proved problematic because it juxtaposed two deep-seated Indonesian passions, support for the Palestinian cause and a love of soccer. Passion for soccer may be less of a consideration with the beach games, even though football is one of the tournament's 14 disciplines. Instead of gaining an electoral boost by echoing anti-Israel Islamic elements, Costa and Pernovo's public rejection of the Israeli youth soccer team has become a boomerang. These two men are attracting negative attention, not least from a large number of Indonesian football fans, noted political scientist Burhanuddin Muhtadi, as Indonesia lost its World Cup hosting rights. Mr. Costa and Indonesian sports minister Dito Atirojejo appear to be betting that Israel will not qualify for any of the beach games disciplines. That could be a risky bet, with the last qualifying events only ending next month. Seemingly prematurely, the two men base their bet on confusion over an ANOC list of 69 countries. Mr. Costa believes the list which does not include Israel, represents countries qualified to participate in the beach games. Anok says the document lists countries taking part in a seminar. I had an agreement when I received 
the visit of the youth and sports minister and the chairman of the Indonesian Olympic Committee, Mr. Rabja, that the World Beach Games in Bali could be held without Israeli participants, Mr. Costa said last month. Mr. Costa's track record with the World Cup, coupled with the confusion, has ensured that unlike the FIFA tournament, the beach games have not sparked anti-Israeli protests. The Israel Olympic Committee insists that Israeli athletes will participate in the Anok only if they are given equal conditions to those of other countries. The committee said the International Olympic Committee is in continuous contact with us on the matter, and we are confident that they will uphold the equality and right of the state of Israel to compete. So far, Israel's men's basketball three times three team and Israeli women swimmers are believed to have qualified for the Bali Beach Games. Losing the Beach Games just months after the World Cup loss would cast a further shadow over Indonesia's efforts to play a more prominent international role. The Southeast Asian nation last year earned kudos for chairing the Group of 20, which brings together the world's largest economies. This year, as chair of the Ten Nation Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, Indonesia has been managing evolving differences in the group on how to approach the Myanmar junta. Thailand broke ranks with ASEAN by hosting the junta's foreign minister on Sunday for informal peace talks. Myanmar has been roiled by violence since a 2021 coup, with the military battling to crush an armed pro-democracy resistance movement on multiple fronts. ASEAN has barred Myanmar from attending senior level meetings for failing to honor an agreement to start talks with its opponents. On another front, Indonesian Defense Minister Prabowo Subiantro, like PDPI's Pranowo, a candidate in next year's presidential election, proposed a peace plan to end the Ukraine war earlier this month. The plan called for a demilitarized zone and a United Nations referendum in what he termed disputed territory. As G20 chair, Mr. Widowo traveled to Moscow and Kiev last year to offer his services to mediate peace talks between the warring parties. Controversy over the beach games puts Mr. Widodo in a bind. Israeli participation in the beach games puts Widodo between a rock and a hard place. What is good for Indonesia may not be what his party thinks is good for its electoral prospects, said an Indonesian analyst. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's column and podcast. Twice weekly, my syndicated column and podcast offers an acclaimed, fresh, and independent perspective on the geopolitics, as well as the politics of religion and sports in the Middle East, Eurasia, and beyond. For the past 12 years, I have maintained free distribution as a way of maximizing impact. I am determined to keep it that way. However, to do so, I need the support of a core of voluntary paid subscribers to cover the cost of producing the column and podcast. If you believe that the column and podcast add value to your understanding and that of the broader public, please consider becoming a paid subscriber. You can do so by clicking on Substack on the subscription button at www jamesmdorsey.substack.com and choosing one of the subscription options. Or support me on Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash soccer. Please join me for my next column and podcast in the coming days. Thank you. Take care and best wishes.